Hi. So in my last vlog entry, um, I said that I was heading into my 39th week of pregnancy and it would hopefully be the last week. Well, if you know me, you realize I was actually pregnant for four more full weeks. Didn't give birth till almost a month later on September 24th. Everything turned out fine. But because that vlog was supposed to be part one of two, I thought that I should finish up even though it's been over a year. Uh, the second part of my week ended up not being as uh, visually compelling as I thought it might be. So I didn't do a part two. Um, but I stayed really busy and then I had a baby and then I was really, really busy. But it's been a year now. He's taking a nap. So, I wanted to finish up the vlog. Um, the reason is that there's a lady who is in my apartment complex. Uh, she's 43 years old, like I am. And last Friday, she went in for in vitro fertilization. Um, she said it would be 10 days until she could take a pregnancy test. And I've just been thinking about her a lot because um, I was just thinking about becoming a, a parent for the first time. And the things that I've learned with my daughter and sometimes relearned with uh, this kid and also new things this time because all kids are different. So I thought um, if I were going to have a message for new time parents, new time parents, new first time parents, what would that message be? And so I have a couple of notes. Um, the biggest thing I think I would tell someone who's expecting a new baby is that the beginning and I may be talking weeks, I may be talking months. It's different for everybody, but the beginning is overwhelming. Um, everyone knows it's going to be hard, you're not going to get any sleep, um, but there is an emotional aspect of it that works in with that sleep deprivation. It just becomes this thing that you cannot imagine happening until it does, to the point that if you're like most normal people, you may, in your weaker moments, think, why were we, why, why did we do this? What were we thinking? Um, and I think that that can be a little disconcerting, especially if you've gone to extraordinary measures to have a baby, whether it's, you know, adopting or um, have gone through fertility treatments, that kind of thing. But that is totally normal um, and it will pass. But don't feel like there's something wrong with you because you're not intensely happy every second of every day. The second thing I would say is that there's no schedule. So throw out the notion that there's a schedule. Your baby doesn't care when you need to do things. Um, you can't make them go to sleep. You can't make them hungry at a certain time. So just throw out the idea of schedule and just go with what happens. Your life's going to be a lot easier if you do. And so sort of related to that, number three is that people are obsessed with baby sleep. But I think you'll be more relaxed even if you're not less sleep deprived um, if you get over it. Uh, there's a book called The Gentle Sleep Book by Sarah, uh, now I forget her last name, she's British. It's a really good book, you should read it. It goes into the science of how we have historically slept, how that's changed in the last couple of hundred years, um, the science of babies developing minds, and how a lot of times the, the schedules that we expect them to adhere to in, in the realm of sleep aren't realistic. Even published guidelines of how much sleep um, a six month old needs or gets. Um, those are overestimations actually, so a lot of parents feel like, oh my gosh, well my kid's never sleeping. Um, be informed and then again, just go with the flow. Um, people equate, is your, do you have a good baby with, is your baby sleeping through the night? And that's not a good um, standard. And I think if your expectations are realistic and low, you'll save yourself a lot of stress. Um, so number four, this whole theme is letting go. Number four, I would say try to let go of wondering when things will be normal again. Um, and I know you expect a new normal, but even wondering when you'll feel like yourself again, because it may take a while. Um, with my first baby, it took about nine months and then I kind of hit my stride and thought, okay, this is cool. And I liked being a mom and, and um, I'd love being a mom. That's all I wanted to do. Um, with this baby at nine months, I was like, it's not getting much easier. I don't know when, when we're going to start clicking. And really, it was probably a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, 
um, sometime after his first birthday that I started feeling like, okay, we're getting this now. We're getting it. Um, so it, actually when Mal was three months old, I remember crying one night when I was trying to put him down before I gave up trying to put him down because it didn't work. Um, telling James it's not getting any easier. It's not, I was just bawling. It's not getting any easier. It should be easier by now. There should be some kind of consistency there's, and there wasn't. So, um, there may not be for you and that's okay. But if you're like me and you're type A and you're an overachiever and you can usually, um, kind of bend things to happen the way that you want. Um, and you're good at making things happen. Um, that can be really hard. So maybe just don't worry about it. You're not going to feel normal. You're not going to feel the same. And it may be a year till you get back into a kind of a groove. That's okay. Uh, so number five is crying. All babies do it. Even good babies do it some. Um, my second baby cried at least three hours every day for the first four months of his life. Um, and I mean, he's screaming. We could feed him, hold him, change him, put him down, walk him, anything. It didn't matter. He would cry. Um, we took him to the emergency room one time and he fell asleep on the way. So we just went back home. Uh, we took him to the doctor once. Um, and of course he was fine at the doctor, but the doctor said everything we told him just sounded like normal. Um, not even colic. I'm, colic doesn't really mean anything. He just cried a lot. And that was just part of who he was. Um, and we had a crib at that time, but I don't think in any of that time we ever just laid him down and let him cry in his crib. Because I don't know why we didn't. It was very stressful. It was overwhelming. There were a lot of times that I would sit dinner down try to sit down and eat with my family and he would be screaming so I'd go on the front porch so that my husband and my daughter could eat in relative quiet. Um, it feel, when your baby's crying, even if your doctor has said everything's fine, it feels like an accusation, like you're a bad parent and you're doing something wrong. But as long as your doctor has given you the A-OK -okay and said they're fine, um, try to lean into it. And by that, I mean, hold them close. Um, even though your instinct is, I'm going to go crazy. If this kid doesn't stop screaming, I've got to get away from it. Um, some people had told us during the time that Mal was having such a hard time when he was a baby that um, during those long nights and during those times when they cry is when a lot of bonding happens. Um, and it didn't make a lot of sense to me then. But now, now that I look back, I can see that um, every moment that we held him to us, even though his really shrill cries were like piercing our ears and piercing our hearts. Um, we were proving to him and maybe to ourselves that even when he is very unlovable, we're going to choose to love him. And I think it's easy to go, well, but yeah, but they're babies. They don't remember that. But um, research indicates that even if they don't remember it in their brains, there are definitely attachment issues from the first year that are very important um, as evidenced by you know kids who are adopted um, out of either orphanages or minimal care situations. Um, even when they're young, they, they can have some attachment issues. So um, I wouldn't want to do that again. <laughs> I'm glad it's over. But um, of the kind of mistakes that I make, I'm like, oh, I can't believe we did that. I just loving on him when he was screaming. Um, was probably one of the better things that we did. Um, so speaking of trying to lean in on that, yeah, don't fight anything. Scheduling, crying, sleeping, eating, um, a lot of new parenting stress comes from trying to control things, I think. I think having a baby, it can be stressful anyway, but when you have these expectations of how it's going to be and then you try to keep pushing things into your parameters, <laughs> then that makes it even more stressful. You can't it's a brand new human. They have their own will. Um, just go with it. And, and not everything that we see as a problem is a problem. Some sleeping problems aren't problems. They're normal. Our schedule is the problem. And so you have to try to find some way to make them work together without thinking that your baby is doing something wrong. Um, oh, number seven, invest in some dry shampoo. It's pretty straightforward. Number eight, don't listen to people who are negative about your choices. If you want advice, get advice. Do your research and then do what you need to do as a parent and don't let anyone make you feel guilty. Not family, not friends, and even I would say experts, um, I've definitely had some heavy-handed advice that I did not take because it didn't feel right to me and everything was fine. So if your baby is thriving 
and what you're doing works for your family, do it and be happy. Um, sleeping, breastfeeding, working, whatever, do what works for your family. Trust your instincts. Um, and if someone tells you to do something that just breaks your heart, you feel like that's, there's that, no, I, there's no way. Don't do it. Don't look back later and be sorry that you did something that you knew was not right for your kid. Um, hold your plans and your ideas loosely. Um, there was a lady on an over 40s mom's group that I was part of who was vision casting about having her baby. And I didn't get annoyed when I shared my birth story. And she said she wanted to have a birth exactly like mine, except instead of swearing, she wanted to be singing. And for the record, the only time I swore was when the midwife was trying to feel where Malcolm was and he was like right there. So I was in pain and when she touched me, I swore at her and told her not to touch me. Um, so anyway, I didn't, I didn't take offense to that and I did not respond to her. But then later she was talking about how she was going to take time for herself when she has a baby. And really, because she can't be a good mom unless she just takes care of herself first. And actually I've read that a lot in so many books I've read lately. Um, but the reality is, sometimes you can't take care of yourself. Sometimes, you, I have hot rolled my hair four times since, since my child was born. Um, I have frequently gone three days, like a shower, and then a day, and a day, and then a shower, um, because it just hasn't lined up. It just hasn't happened. And if I were um, obsessed with trying to make sure I get that shower, try, I mean, God, I just have that shower, and um, that would be very stressful to me. Um, obviously, have taking care of yourself as a goal, and then if you don't hit that goal, let it go and say, well, we'll try tomorrow, or we'll try the next day. And you kind of have to apply the same thing to everything, whether it's date night with your spouse. Oh, when you have a baby, it's so important that you still stay connected to your spouse. It is. Um, in fact, James and I wanted to watch The Aviator together recently, and we watched it. Um, we watched it over three sittings one weekend, and then we skipped the next weekend because we had company. Then we finished it up on the third weekend. So it took us two full weeks to watch a movie um, because we can't watch a movie when the baby's awake. And he wakes up a lot. <laughs> so we had to watch it in chunks. And that's kind of our date night. Um, we actually played a card game for the first time in since he the baby became mobile um, last weekend and we still didn't finish it because he woke up from his nap but I was going all in anyway so we just packed it up um, that's rare by the way I don't usually win card games um, so we haven't had a date actually my sister watched Mal one time and he slept for two hours and James and I went next door when we lived downtown and got Taco Cabana but um, obviously we try to connect we want to stay um, together as a couple over the long haul, but we also know this is a season and it may not happen. He won't stay with the babysitter. It's just what it is. Um, and we still love each other. We're still a team. So again, have it as a goal. Try to have date night, try to connect, but if it doesn't happen, let it go and keep going. Um, the same thing we say with staying in touch with your friends or, um, pretty much anything that you want to do, um, your hobbies or things like that. Again, um, have them as goals. And then if you don't miss them, instead of feeling like you failed, just feel like you set the bar really high and we can't always reach the bar. It just happens when you have a baby um, and you're doing the most important thing. So keep doing the most important thing. So let's see. Oh, number 10, my last thing is, don't feel like you're morally obligated to enjoy every minute. A lot of parenting is tedious and repetitive and as much as I love my son, and sometimes I laugh so hard um, when I'm sitting in his room and he does something new or funny, um, Thomas and the Tim Balloons is not my favorite book. I do not aspire to read it twice a day, but I do. Um, the thing is, the really enjoyable moments can't happen if you're not there. So you kind of have to live through all the other stuff, too, to have the really incredible moments. Um... And it's worth it, all those little miracle moments that like threaten to burst your heart. Um, but you don't have to have that same intense level of 
oh my gosh, this kid is amazing. <laughs> like every second of your life. Um, sometimes it's really overwhelming. Um, and being overwhelmed is okay. Um, ask for help. If people offer to help, tell them specifically what you need. Always let people bring you food. Um, people say sleep when the baby sleeps. I have tended to eat when the baby sleeps, except for right now. You can vlog when your baby sleeps. Um, and, and it's only been in the last probably three months that he slept in a space by himself. So I've been able to do this like almost the first year of his life. I had to wear him or be holding him or he wouldn't sleep at all. That may not happen for you. If it does, just know it feels like forever and it's not. And then you have this incredible kid um, and everything that happens where things feel easier. You'll be very, very grateful and you'll enjoy it more and more. Um, obviously, um, I like being a mom. I would advocate for it, but I feel like there's a lot of uh, disservice done to mothers in commercials and things where it's got the soft lullaby playing and the baby sleeping or the mommy's holding it and loving on it. Um, and those moments are magical and they're not by any stretch of the imagination. The majority of your experience, it's real life and it's messy and it's exhausting, but it's great. And the more that you stay with your uh, intuition and your heart, I think the happier you'll be and the happier your kid will be and the more you'll enjoy it. Good luck. That's it.